Diamonds are a true miracle of mother nature and indeed a girl's best friend. And who would know better about this fact rather than the world's leading diamond jewelry company, which is De Beers. Well, diamonds are actually older than dinosaurs. And forever marked diamonds are the most beautiful diamonds in the world. With me in the studio today is Stephen Lucier, who took up the role of Chief Executive Officer of Forever Mark and is also the Executive Vice President Marketing, De Beers Group, in year 2009. Forever Mark, a brand whose selection process is actually so rigorous that less than 1% of the world's diamonds can actually become a Forever Mark diamond. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks very much. I was just hoping, and we were going through some facts, to, um, you know, Stephen, and it's. I just want to know that, do you think the diamond industry has contributed to India's economic growth over the years? Do you know, it's extraordinarily how important the jewelry industry in total and the diamond industry in particular is to, to India. I'm not sure people quite realize the scale of, of this industry on a global footprint. I mean, the gems and jewelry represents 7.5% of the GDP okay. of India. In terms of exports, really where diamonds come in, 15% of exports from gems and jewelry, predominantly diamonds, some $20 billion. And you know, in terms of employment, nearly 5 million people involved in this sector in, in India. So India is, when it comes to diamonds, particularly cutting and manufacturing, the world's center uh, right. today. Oh, it's yeah. an impressive, extraordinarily impressive story. Speaking of numbers, do you think in the past, uh, let's assume 30 to 40 years ago, do you think the demand back in the day has increased, has it decreased, or is it just the same over the years for diamonds in the country? Oh, uh, diamond demand is huge now compared to the 30 years ago. You know, I started with De Beers about 30 years ago, and in those days, it was really about demand in the US and, and Japan. And now we have a, a, a global demand with places like China, which in terms of diamond demand didn't exist even 25 years ago, today representing some 15 to 20 percent of the world. And then, of course, you know, India. If we look back 30 years, there was really no marketing for diamonds. That's right. It was really gold uh, only. Mostly. Then. So diamonds is a new phenomena here. So, you know, the demand, if we look over 30 years, has been only on an upward trend and I think will continue to be so. But also, you know, when we speak about Forever Mark as a brand, uh, what makes it stand out? You know, I was like I said in my opening, only one percent actually are eligible to become a Forever Mark. What is the kind of criteria that you look at? You know, as Forever Mark is a brand. Yeah, you know, Forever Mark is an extraordinary story. Only ten years old in the in the world of luxury brands. You know, that's like a baby, but yet already the world's most important diamond it brand. Is. And I think it's because you know the advantage sometimes of starting something new is that you can redefine what, what the category is about. And that's the approach that Forever Mark took. So, you know, at, the, at its fundamental, it's about the extraordinary beauty of a diamond. You know, when people wear diamonds, what they want is they want it, them to sparkle and to have the fire and the scintillation, the, the magic. Um, and that's much more important than some of the things like you hear about the four C's. Well, yeah. that's part of the story, but beauty is much more uh, specific than that. All right. And Forevermark defined its selection based on the inherent beauty of the rough diamond and the polished diamond that comes from it. And I think with your eye, you can see the difference. And that's the core of this concept of selecting for beauty by experts as opposed to selecting by numbers. So what is, what is this uh, selection process? I, there's some 44 steps in this whole process that yeah, I was reading uh, some time ago. It's quite an extensive process, and we do it in three places in the world, here in India, in, oh, wow. in Surat, in Antwerp, uh, in Belgium, and just outside uh, London. So we have three uh, selection centers. And we have to start in the beginning with making sure that the diamond is natural as mother nature created it a billion years ago. And so there's nothing that's been done to that diamond that would in any way impact its value. So there's a whole series of, of rigorous checks. Then we check for the, for the purity of the diamond. When I say that, you know, rough diamonds, they have to have that, that transparent magic to them in the first place. Otherwise, the polished diamond that comes from it 
will never be as beautiful as another. So we start by looking for that, uh, that transparency inherent in the diamond. Then the color, then the clarity of the diamond, then of course the cut, which is extraordinarily important yeah. because it's the cut that really releases the fire. Absolutely. So we have very strict criteria. But even after that, you know, we want the surface, what's called the table, to be mirror-like in its smoothness, almost like a brand new ice rink that's just had the water put on it. So there's nothing to mar the way that diamond looks to your eye. So it's a long process. At the end of it, we inscribe it invisibly with our uh, icon and a number unique to that diamond. So every Forevermark diamond is not only unique, but carries a, a unique number All right, that uh, is for exclusive. its entire life. Oh, wow. All right, that that's definitely uh, speaks for the brand. Mm. But, I've, you know, every time somebody thinks of mining, and I'm speaking as somebody who's probably not very aware, but when somebody speaks of mining, for that matter, one thinks of people getting displaced, uh, Mother Nature getting hampered, a uh, lot of drilling, a mm. lot, of, lot of all of the chaos that's happening. Uh, but as a company, you say, you know, as Forever Mark, you guys, uh, you know, say that diamonds do good. What good are we talking about here, Stephen? Yeah, and it's really fundamental to not only Forever Mark, but the De Beers group from which Forever Mark uh, comes. Because, um, you know, there's a lot of stories about uh, mining, but diamond mining is actually a very environmentally low impact activity. There aren't that many diamond mines in the world and they're basically a hole uh, we dig in, in the ground without use of chemicals and things of that sort which could affect the environment in a permanent way. But nonetheless, you're right, uh, we dig a hole in, in, in the ground. So we take the view though that our role for the entire community must be bigger when it comes to the environment. So. Today, for every hectare of land that's disturbed by the mining footprint, the De Beers Group will manage six hectares purely for conservation. And we really are driven by two things. One is to protect the natural world. You know, we think of diamonds as nature's miracle. Do you, I think you managed to conserve some, I think more than 500 or in fact more, uh, more than that uh, elephants in, in around Africa if I'm not wrong. Yeah, or I mean we're, numbers wrong? we're in this extraordinary uh, project at the moment which um, I mean it just makes me smile when I think about it because the challenge of elephant you know elephant are endangered largely through poaching across Africa That's right. today. The challenge with elephant is some areas have too many yeah. and some areas have too due to few. poaching now too few. And they're very important to the sustainability of the economies of Africa because of ecotourism. So in some of our conservation areas, particularly in, in South Africa, where we've protected and breeding the elephant, we now have the problem of too many. Now, okay. historically, in, the, in nature reserves, when you have too many, people call the elephant because too many elephant can destroy the habitat right. and actually endanger the lives of all the other animals that you're uh, protecting. But calling seems to us that fundamentally the wrong thing to do in a world where elephant need to be protected. Okay. And so we've started this, this project to, in effect, transport elephant. We're transporting 200 elephant. We think our areas can probably, uh, in South Africa, handle somewhere around 60 or 70 elephant. Mm -hmm. We have nearly 300. So we're transporting 200 of them, 17 hundred kilometers across Africa. Wow. And I can tell you not on motorways. You know, this is a this is a in rural Africa to Mozambique to an, to a natural uh, nature reserve in reserve. Mozambique that has been in the previous decade uh, have a poaching issue and so they don't have enough elephant now. They now have a secure uh, area but they need the elephant. And I think it's just an extraordinary thing to see these giants uh, being moved safely across such a stretch of Africa. Uh, and it, you know, is really the right thing to do. Absolutely it is. Speaking of other initiatives, uh, what are the other initiatives that Forever Mark and De Beers as a, as a brand, as a company are also in? People, particularly young consumers, they ask me today, what's your purpose? You know, as, a, as a brand, as a company, what's your purpose? Why should I come work with you at De Beers? And they're asking me, what's the social purpose? What good are we doing? And so when we looked at our own business, we thought, well, it has to be connected with us. Hmm. So that's why you, you see us protecting endangered species, because the natural world 
is inherently what diamonds are about and the areas where we, we operate in, they're so important. But if I'm gonna say to you, that what's the other really important uh, factor is that diamonds are a girl's best friend. They are. You know, and it mustn't be just the women who get to wear the end diamond. Diamonds have to be the best friend of women all the way through their journey from the communities where they start as a rough diamond through the cutting centers, through the jewelers. So for De Beers, our other real focus is on the empowerment and creating opportunity for women, for women particularly in an industry, the mining industry, that has historically been male dominated. Male dominated. dominated. Okay. So it's a, um, a real ambition for us. And to make that commitment real for us, last year we joined with the UN program He for She. Okay. And what is He for She about? It's really recognizing that, that men have to be part of the solution to women's empowerment, not part of the problem. And that in a, in a company where the majority are today men, we need to help women create opportunities for them, give them the skills so they can achieve parity uh, over time. And that's our commitment with the UN, to achieve parity in the appointment of management to De Beers, not sometime long in the future, but by 2020. Hmm. Also, how has uh, De Beers uh, impacted these mining countries? I want to just go back a little. Uh, how has it really, of course, yeah. one is uh, definitely looking at and at conserving the wildlife and all of that. But in terms of business, uh, do you think that it has helped in increasing the GDP of a particular country? Do you know, the diamond story, particularly De Beers, but to be honest, uh, the diamond story as a whole, if you look at the other major producers, is one of enormous contribution, particularly because most diamonds come from the developing world. That's right. And today, cut and polish, mostly in India. Uh, so these are countries, whether it's Southern Africa or, or, or India, who need employment and who need the wealth of those countries to work for the betterment of the country as a whole. And the diamond story is an extraordinarily positive one. I mean, Botswana today, a small country in, in Southern Africa, the leading producer uh, of diamonds, and the change in Botswana uh, from a, really one of the poorest countries in the world when diamonds were first discovered there by De Beers to today a middle income country and probably the best example of good government across Africa. And where did that money come from? It came from, from diamonds. You know, we calculate that at De Beers about 80% of the diamond revenue that emanates from Botswana goes back into the country. That's great. Uh, through uh, government sharing as partners with us, through taxes and through wealth creation. Uh, so it's, it's an amazing story. If anyone wants to see the benefit of diamonds, what I should say, go to Botswana and see with your eyes what they've done to that country. But I think, uh, you know, uh, looking at the overall view, uh, I think one thing I'm definitely convinced about that, you know, how I looked at it probably two hours before, uh, looking at when I think of diamonds, when I think of mining uh, and all the other stuff that comes along with it versus speaking to you two hours later. I think I'm absolutely convinced with a few things that, you know, as a company which has a deeper sense of value and mission like yours, uh, I think you're creating an absolute impact in terms of conserving the wildlife, really helping economically uh, challenged countries to increase their GDP. So all my congratulations yeah, to you. Yeah, but you know, is. I think it's just... Um a company like De Beers has been in business over 130 years. And the only way you stay in business for that long, particularly when you're working as partners with government, is if you're creating a lot of good from the assets that you have. Absolutely. You know, we sort of think that they are, when you're in mining of diamonds, they're not your diamonds. Those are diamonds that belong to the people of the nations in which you're operating. So you have a responsibility to make sure that they benefit from that activity. So what are these steps that are taken to ensure that the diamonds that are sourced, they are actually sourced in a very responsible manner? So we're still in conversation with Stephen, who is going to be telling us about Forever Mark's role in the country, like in a country like ours. Uh, Stephen, I want to know that how has Forever Mark as a brand created the kind of impact that it has in terms of one numbers and two, uh, you know, in the type of uh, again corporate social responsibility as a brand that you do in our country. Yeah, do you know it's um, India is probably. Uh 
our greatest success story for the Forevermark brand and something that really thrills me. I've been coming to India for a long time in the diamond business. And actually, we started the brand in, in Forevermark in India uh, after uh, China and Japan and, and the US. So it came a little bit later, but it's clearly a, a star performer. So, you know, in a little bit of a handful of years, what, what have we got? We have 240 partner jewelers across India today, the okay. finest jewelers uh, in the country. That represents about 10% of our global uh, jeweler footprint. So we're in 10%. about 2,400 doors across the whole world. But those 10% of jewelers account for worldwide 25% of the volume sales of Forevermark wow. in India today. So the most productive stores uh, we have in the world. As I sometimes ask myself, well, why, you know, why is it, it, it gripped India to such a degree? 25% of the market share is extraordinary. You know, growing 50% per year, okay. it's extra year after year after year. It's a great story. And I think it comes down to a couple of really key points. The most important one is, I think, the trust that people have That's right. in the brand. You know, the amount of effort that we put into selecting a diamond before we put our name on it is confidence inspiring. And I think you have to recognize buying diamonds is not an easy thing to do. It is not. They're expensive. You know, you're not sure the differences uh, between one and another and whether you're paying the right price. Absolutely. And having a brand like Forevermark do that work for you, I think just makes you relaxed about, much more relaxed about buying. You know, if it has the Forevermark name, it's the best. It uh, is the best, undoubtedly. So uh, speaking of, uh, you know, the community in India, this is definitely, of course, they're very expensive, very rightly said, one has to think about 10 times before investing in a diamond. But what apart from, uh, you know, that makes them unique is what I want to know. Yeah, I mean, it's good because you have to start with the, the premise that every diamond in the world is unique from one another. It's one of the magic things about nature that um, it doesn't do the same thing twice. And so when well, you might go to a store and you look and they oh well, maybe to your eye quickly, they all look similar. There are no two diamonds that have inclusions in the same place. Uh -huh. They all have their little unique story. story. And that's why you need a, a really an, an expert to to look at them. So uniqueness, I think, is inherent in, in diamonds. And I think what Forevermark brings uniquely to it is the level of expertise and selecting way beyond what the industry does. Yeah, we heard does. about the 44 step process it's, for sure. You know, it, because we so believe that, that, that that diamond that you own is going to be really precious for you. Absolutely. For your whole life. That's and right. probably for your children's life after. Absolutely. So it's important to get it right. So what are these steps that are taken to ensure that the diamonds that are sourced, they are actually sourced in a very responsible manner? Yeah, responsible sourcing for us means really two things. You know, on the, the, the sort of minimum level is to make sure that the mines where they come from and the, the companies that cut and polish them, our partners, uh, uh, have standards that, that uh, are the highest in the world and that are met. So only, only selected mines around the world can supply to Forevermark and only selected experts can cut and polish them. Yeah. The real question, and I always think, that I ask my team is, okay, what have we done today that's benefited the world? So one thing to have everyone comfortable with standards, it's another thing to look at what we've done. And that's, as we talked a lot about what De Beers has done, you know, that's a big part of it, and, but also our partners in India we say, well, okay, what are you guys doing today exactly. to improve uh, things in a place like Surat, where our, our large facilities are located? And so we take that same concept to places like Surat, saying, okay, what can we do to help young women in this country mm. with their particular challenges? And it's exciting. Some of our, uh, our partners here are creating polishing factories uh, where they're cutting and polishing Forevermark diamonds that are only uh, staffed by women. Oh, that's great. And, um, and these women-only environments in order to create opportunity, first for training women. and skills development. And we're speaking about India? In, absolutely, in India. Wow. And I think that's something that, just, you know, I just get happy when I hear it, because I thought, wow, that, what, a, what a great initiative in order to empower women, but to give them skills uh, and 
and obviously incomes that That's they can right. use to help look after their families. We've had a lot of women uh, being a part of your initiative in Forever Mark. But I also want to know, uh, what about women buying diamonds for themselves? Yeah, you know, it, it is the global mega trend today. So, uh, you know, while women around the world are becoming more economically empowered, that's right. What we're seeing is that they're not necessarily waiting for uh, a man their to buy them. To buy them. Really they are. still like to get the gifts, yeah. but why can't they buy uh, a Forever Mark diamond to mark an important moment in their personal life? That's right. Like when they got a new job or a promotion. It's an important event outside of the family, and diamonds are fantastic for marking moments in a way that you remember years later. So women buying diamonds for themselves, I think is, is the new excitement uh, of the world. I can't wait until my wife does the same. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. As a brand, uh, they've really taken things to another level, right from their cut clarity to the purity with which they are actually sourced from, uh, right from, uh, from the mother nature's womb. Uh, they're also contributing uh, in intensively and extensively towards the environment. We're talking about a brand which needs no introduction. It's Forever Mark and De Beers Diamond Company. Thank you so much for your time, Stephen. It was a pleasure knowing all the efforts that you've been putting up, not only in bringing up the best diamonds to, you know, of the world to the countries of the world, but also doing what you guys are doing as a, as a brand, as a company, to make sure that the world's a better place. Well, thanks so much, and I really enjoyed chatting today. Thank you very much.